have a surprise in this one. Be careful with this one. Look at that. Huh. Lure in that one. He must have got away. He was I caught the one that got away. Not bad. I'll keep that. I'll use it. Look at that guy. I mean, I know he's teeny, but oh man, walleye are so good. I guess there might be some people wondering, why do I choose such a fancy survival knife? I mean, look at that thing. Cost me four dollars. I know, pretty fancy. And some people may say, oh, well, you know, you must not be a real survivalist because, um, you know, I don't have like one of those. Uh, what's those? No, is it those, uh, Those knives from Norway, like people wear them around their necks. Um, or, I don't know, some kind of fancy, I don't know, fancy survival knife or Rambo knife. Whatever. And, you know, it's ironic that I even use this because my wife works for a knife company. My wife works for Blade HQ, which sell all kinds of expensive fancy knives and she gets a discount um, I'll tell you why I'll tell you why I use this particular particular knife one is like I love the uh, the little belt hook that once that's on your belt hook it's gonna tear your pants off before it comes undone I like that because uh, I can wear it outside my pockets and keep things that I want inside the other thing is, um, well, I mean, my knife is a little bit dull right now, so what do you do when you need to sharpen your knife? Well, there we go. Sharpened. I mean, I, I don't know how to describe, I don't know how to... How to justify it other than that i mean look at how look at how useful that is it's just so and and not only that but i mean if i were to drop this knife into a lake or if i were to um break the blade which i've done i've done that probably half a dozen times broken the blade on like expensive knives and if that's the case with this knife well i'm only out four bucks i mean i guess you could count the cost of the razor knight or the razor blade but that's i buy it in a 50 pack or 20 bucks so do the math it's cheap I mean the blade is cheap so um, why do I use this knife because it's the best survival knife that's why it's that's the only reason why I use it because it's the best survival knife well let's start cooking some fish I got this thing made up um, sharpen my knife uh, let's see if we can't cook up some of that fish. So did today we've got a few fish. We've got a couple smallmouth bass and a walleye. Oh, I am so excited about that. Look at that white meat in there. Oh, walleye is so good. Oh, uh, these smallmouth are really good too. I would say both, I would rank them higher than trout. And trout's pretty good. Trout's okay. 
but these guys are amazing and I wish you could smell them uh, they have a really strong smelly stinky fishy flavor but it's been my experience that the fish species that smell the worst are the ones that taste the best uh, I can't explain that I don't know how that happens but it does it I mean at least for me that's been my experience so anyway we've also got all of this mustard and I'm gonna use that to show you a couple different ways to cook the fish um, I do love the greens those are really really good but um, not today today we're not gonna do that today we're gonna I'm gonna show you a couple different ways on fish I, you've already done a fish video before um, but I'm gonna show you a couple other ways um, the first time I cooked I did them stir-fry and then I made a fish soup um, you can look at those videos but these I'm gonna do a little bit different uh, I'll show you so this little guy I'm gonna save him for later as careful as I can try to get all the meat as possible but you know like I've shown you in other videos it doesn't really matter if you don't get all of it because it, it none of it goes to waste but I'm gonna try to dry these guys out see that's a pretty nice little fillet right there and I didn't really miss much and I'm not I'm not gonna skin it that's that's not an awesome one but it'll work this right here we're gonna save for another fish soup what I'm gonna do is take our salt and people say well oh you know you should smoke your fish well all right I guess that's okay but like when you salt cure this oh my now you're really talking I'm just gonna put a little salt on that both of them that one turned out really good I like that one salt is a great preservative we'll put a little salt on there and boom you say oh well you know aren't you going to smoke it eh, probably not that salt is going to act as a great preservative it's going to leach all that water out for one thing and you can already see it starting to beat up i think i don't know if you can see that on the camera yeah. but it's starting to pull that water out which is ideal all we're going to have left are the two fillets. So I'm just going to let these spot right here. These. Yep. Right there. Right in the sunshine. So those are just going to dry over the next, I don't know, two days, week. And that salt's gonna cure right into it and I'm gonna have some yummy fish after that all right here's what you typically see people do when they're gonna cook a fish they go like this sometimes they'll just cook it just like that oh boy we're gonna cook our fish this is the worst way you could cook a fish. This just is not the way you do it. This isn't, and I've even seen where they'll, you know, roast it on the, you know, the two sticks on each side. and They'll roast the fish just like this. This is not how to roast a fish. This isn't how you broil a fish. Look at that, I've already burnt the fins. 
this is this is a bad way you know i've seen people do it like this too so they'll plant oh, fire's hot plant that in the ground like that okay yeah now we're cooking now we're cooking fish no this is the worst way to cook a fish let me show you let me show you a better way to do it and let me show you no not a better way let me show you the well i guess it's not the best let me show you yeah i'm gonna go with better let me just show you a better way to cook fish um yeah let's go with that okay fire pit going get those rocks in the bottom heat up nice and hot get the coals going I'll show you how to pit roast uh, some fish. All right, so this guy is a little bit different. Now I've got, let's see, I've got a bunch of these mustard plants. So I'm going to take these leaves off. They're not terrible. I mean, they're a little old, but they're okay. I'm gonna take some of the stems. Stems are gonna stay down here. Set that in here. Take our leaves. Bottom, we don't really have to do a lot of protection. We've got just a nice coal going on there, but still gonna do just a little bit there because there is a few coals. Okay, that looks all right. We're gonna dig Mr. Walleye. Put him in there. Okay. That looks good. Well protected. Perfect. Take these leaves. Those are the ones that we want to have in direct contact with the fish or any meat that you're cooking, really. Because these these taste delicious. And if you put something that tastes awful, let's see. Uh, you take something that tastes awful, and if you put that in direct contact with the fish, it's going to taste awful also. So, the fish or animal, whatever it is you're cooking, will absorb the flavor of whatever it is that you're cooking it with. So, I'm going to put these delicious mustard plants right up against him. Like that. And then we're going to take stems and flower heads. There we go. Now we can put that. Okay, he's pretty well protected. And then, probably take some of these box elder maple leaves and just kind of stack those on top there. As long as they're not touching, should be just fine. Oh, I can already smell it starting to cook. Now we're gonna get... Fire going on top. That's going to look pretty good. Right, well, we're going to set this up to broil our fish. I'm just using, uh, this is just box elder maple. But the principle is just to 
follow my first and only rule with survival cooking and that is that coals cook flames burn so we're gonna ditch this whole idea right there all together and we're just gonna set this guy up here and just let him go got a nice bed of coals going there not a lot of flame going on and any flame that is down there is really low because flames burn coals cook so I'm gonna stick with that principle and just let this guy cook not burn all right well since we about lost the head that's okay there. I just need to cook up pretty well. Okay. So we can get him plated. We'll call it good. Okay. Well, looks like it's cooked just right. If you've watched any of my other fish videos, you know that this fin is one of the, my favorite parts. You, know, you can see it really well once it's broiled, but look at, let's see. So look at that meat right there along the fin bones. I don't know if you can see it or not. Oh, that stuff's amazing. It's so tender. Mm. That's so flavorful. Oh, it's cooked just right. All the collagen is kind of melted away. It's super sticky. Look at that. It's, it's so well cooked, it's sticking to my fingers. All right. Well, like I always say, especially in survival, eat everything with salt. So I'm going to stick to that. Put a little bit of salt on there. Over a bit of salt on there. Oh. Yep, always eat everything with salt because you're always losing salt. You want to make sure you've always you're always replacing it. Now take out take out some of this meat. Oh I want my chopsticks. Huh. Looks like I'm missing one of my chopsticks. Must have uh, walked off in the middle of the night, I guess. Mm. See? Now that's how you broil mm -hmm. fish. It's just sticking to my fingers. I was really hungry too. This we're going to save. I'm going to let that dry out. Use that for another meal. It's not very fishy. Very clean white meat flavor. Mm. So much better than trout. Bass 
the other, other, other white meat. Well, that's really good. Let's check on um, my walleye. I'm pretty excited about the walleye. Let's see how the walleye's doing. We'll eat them both together. All right, well, I hope you can see it. Take off all of our mustard greens. Oh, some of them have even cooked up just a little bit. Well, that's still pretty tough. Oh. There we go. Okay. Looks like it might got a little bit crispy. That doesn't look too bad. Head off. Put him in the dry pile. Ooh. Look at that. Oh man. Oh. It roasted perfection. My favorite part. Mm. Bones came off of it. All right. Well. Ooh. Look at that. It's still hot. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Skin is tough. Look at that. Again. A little salt. So small mouth has a little more, like maybe a little more fat to it. The walleye is, has a little more texture to it. Yeah, I think that if I had to eat one fish for the rest of my life, it would definitely be walleye. I mean, I'm just gonna say that. So pit roasting them. Or broiling them over coals, not over flames. Very, very important. Um, both ways work terrific. Um, both ways can cook up just perfect. And they don't take very long, but fish doesn't take a long time to cook anyway. I had them in there for probably, I don't know. Oh man, that walleye is so good. It took on that smoky flavor. It's almost it's almost kind of bacony. Anyway, that's amazing stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. So yeah, both ways work terrific and both ways are a hundred percent better than trying to cook it or roast it over a flaming fire um that you're just asking for trouble if you if you burn something in a wilderness survival situation you basically lost all of the nutrients eh, not all of them but you've lost a lot of the nutrient value that the fish would have had for you um so especially in a survival situation, um, just take your time and um, and let it slow cook and let it, you know, like 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 look how the collagen 
is just sticking to my fingers. I've got meat just sticking to my fingers because of all of the collagen. The meat just sticks to it. That's an important vital nutrient right there. Look, I don't even need chopsticks because it just sticks. It just sticks to my finger. That's because the, the slow cooking process starts to break down the bones and the cartilage. And that's really important nutritional value. Um, or I should say that's, that's a really important nutrient um, that you don't want to waste. And you will waste it if you try to, you know, cook over an open fire. But anyway, um, fish is a great meal. Um, a lot of people don't like the flavor of fish. And, you know, I should have mentioned it before, but when I was down there at the reservoir fishing, there was nobody down there. Like, and that place is usually packed. But the, uh, uh, the trout have kind of turned off a little bit for the summertime, which means that um, in these higher elevations, the smallmouth, the largemouth, the walleye are now going to start to come on a little bit stronger. But most people don't really know that or take the time to, I guess, monitor their their cycles. But anyway, um, so I, I basically had the whole river or the whole reservoir to fish on my own, to fish by myself. Um, not a complaint. But yeah, this tastes like a meal that you would get in a restaurant. I mean, smoked over a fire. Uh, it just doesn't get really any better than that. Um, but yeah, like if you're gonna if you're gonna use fish as a as a resource, make sure you're taking advantage of all of the, the different species in a given area. Like, you know, a couple months ago, those uh, those little bass were. Um, really coming on at Utah Lake and people will go down there and fish them out by the hundreds. Um, now that those guys have turned off, the place is a ghost town and people don't even realize that that's when the catfish start coming on. So as soon as I see that um, the white bass have stopped, that's when I completely change shift gears and start fishing for catfish um, because the catfish are coming on. Same with the reservoir. It's, you know, the, the the trout are turning off, um, maybe going down deeper, and um, those smallmouth and the walleye, those are coming on. The walleye are not going to stick around for very long. They're pretty smart fish. I'm convinced that the more delicious an animal is, the more it knows it, and the more it... Uh, tends to take care of itself a little bit better as far as predators and humans. Well, humans are predators, but. Bones. But anyway, um, learn the different patterns. You know, the same thing goes with the plants. Like with the plants, you know, those leafy greens are turning off right now. Um, and uh, just as a side note, do you, did you notice that there was no um, bad flavor from the plants we used? So because we used that mustard plant, it didn't, it didn't get any more, you know, like if we had used burdock or you know anything else really you know, even this this maple if we'd use maple leaves that flavor would have gotten into the fish but since we didn't man it came out just perfect um but anyway yeah learn the seasons so, so now that the leafy greens are coming or turning off something else will be coming on so um, you just have to know what you're what you're dealing with like people think that they can just learn, you know, 20 wild edible plants and they'll be fine. But no, that's, you have to learn that plant 
uh, and what it produces in what season and when to harvest it. It's, it's not just like uh, now that you know dandelion, you just can now harvest anything you want. Um, anytime you want. It's not, it doesn't work that way. But anyway, um, I guess that's all. I can't think of anything else. Um, but the next time that we that I do this, um, I've got the fish drying up here. I still have our bones and skins, which we'll save. We'll make a soup out of that. And yeah, I guess I'll see you on the next one.